Welcome everybody to Bunker Hill Community College here in Boston, Massachusetts, the site of today's NJCAA New England Region Championship game between the Massasoit Community College Warriors and the Bristol Community College Bayhawks. How you doing everybody? I'm David Canoza. Alongside me is Champagne Poppy. We're broadcasting here from Boston. It's the New England Regional Championship game, Craig, the Battle of Route 24. You got that grin on your face. I like to see that. We're happy. We don't have the matchup that we thought we were going to have. We thought we were going to have the rematch of last week's MCC AC Championship game between Bunker Hill, <coughs> excuse me, easy for me to say, and the Bristol <laughs> Community College Bayhawks. We don't have that matchup. Massasoit yesterday in, a, in an upset, quote unquote upset. Massasoit is the number two team, Craig. But uh, nonetheless, a, a, a thriller yesterday that went down to the wire. Massasoit came out on top. And here we have, it's the Battle of Route 24, Massasoit and Bristol Community College, the number one and number two team respectively. And here we are, championship game. Yes, Dave, this is what we've been waiting for all year round. This is the day we've been talking about. It is the regional finals here, Region 21 at Bunker Hill. As you said again, though, not the matchup we were expecting. Although Massasoit was the number two seed, we really thought Bunker Hill was going to be the favorite. We thought we were just going to see a rematch of last week. And you know how sports goes. It doesn't always go how you expect. And like you said, we got Massasoit versus Bristol Community College. Bristol Community College has had great success against the Warriors throughout the season. I believe they swept them throughout the regular season if I'm correct, at least the games we covered. Well, we know it's hard to beat a team three times. This is like the, this is the knockout blow. It's hard to get that TKO in boxing and any kind of realm of sports. It's hard to beat a team three times. We talked to one of the coaches uh, before the game, and they said, going to beat a team three times. Going to be tough to do, but we'll see what happens. Looks like we are going to take this court side to the PA announcer here pretty soon. But, uh, yeah, BCC, they've never been. They've never been to the Nationals. A win here today and they'll take their first trip to the Nationals in New York upstate. So we're going to take it down courtside, get ready for the player introductions and the National Anthem.
Good afternoon and welcome everybody to Bunker Hill Community College here in Boston, Massachusetts, the city of champions. It is Championship Sunday. I'm David Cardoza. I'm joined by Champagne Poppy. We're getting ready for the tip-off here. Bristol Community College in their white uniforms with the green trimmings and in all green, the Massasoit Community College Warriors. Warriors coming here, the number two team. Bristol been the number one team all postseason. Bristol Community College never, ever been to the Nationals and a, a win here today would uh, punch their ticket. And, and Craig, Josh Winbush coming in. Great sign to see that he is going to be in the starting lineup and the tip, and it's won by BCC. Holloway chases it down, yeah, gets it to Vega. Almost went out the back, but yeah, it is good to see that he's back out there. We saw that scary injury yesterday. It looked like knee-related, but he appears to be in tip-top shape right now. That ball goes sailing out of bounds. BCC coached by nine-year nine -year coach, Coach Robert Delalue. BCC with a lot of success under Coach Rob Delu. Last several years, one of the top teams in Region 21, going deep into postseason play. Just haven't been able to get over the hump, and that's the story here today. Massasoit with a big win yesterday against Bunker Hill. Okay. And BCC, looks like they're in zone. Corner shot, jumper, no good. It goes over the backboard and out of bounds, so BCC will take possession. Yeah, shot was by Bobby Belazos. Bringing up the court, it's the floor general for this BCC team, Alex Holloway. Matt Soy looks like they're in, looks like they were man to man. BCC's going to turn the ball over. Yeah, they're going to say it's off of Corey Green. Corey Green looking dumbfounded, thought it went off of one of the Warriors players, but no, he's getting called with the last touch. Yeah, it looked like he didn't like the call there, Craig, but regardless, here comes Rayel Handy. Rayel, Rayel Handy, number 12 with the basketball. Sophomore from Easton. That jumper, high, Winbush. Winbush had double-figure rebounds in the first half yesterday before he um, ultimately got hurt in the second half. That he did. He only did not play very long in the second half, but his impact on the first half was felt. BCC likes to flash Winbush high. That's what they're doing. And he looks to be getting around good on that knee so far, so good. Holloway going strong to the hole, gets it blocked by Monroe. Uh, he's trying to get it back quickly though, can't get it though. Warriors are able to hang on. And you gotta watch out for Monroe, he's the big kid, number 34, he just had the block. Look for that matchup, Josh Winbush and uh, Mr. Monroe over there. Two of the top leaders in rebounds in yep. Region 21. New England Regional Championship. Well, two minutes in the game, no one's scored yet. Corner jumper, Belazos for there three, gets the trifecta. Massasoit off to a 3 nothing lead. Top of the key, Holloway gets the bounce, gets it to roll in. Alex Holloway, all tournament, all tournament player in the MCC-AC tournament, yep. was the all-tournament MVP. And he was pretty quiet yesterday, so he's looking to have a big game here tonight. Oh, for sure. Three to two. Going, to the, going inside to Monroe. Monroe holding on to it. Yeah, picked up the dribble. I kind of thought he was going to travel with it. Yeah, me too. But there's and, the travel. Oh, well, somebody does. Mark Georges. 
Again, David Cardoza and Champagne Poppy on the call. Quick sub here. Mitchell coming in quickly for Alex Holloway. Come tournament play, Marcus Mitchell getting a lot of playing time. Yeah, he's a good first guy off the bench. When he gets rolling, ooh, taking a digger is uh, Zachary Vega over there. Wimbush inside on Monroe. So a cutting Espinal off the glass and in. Count it for two. A nice find by Winbush. He had about three players guarding him. Got the bounce pass to Espinal. That's just great court vision from Winbush. And Winbush looking good early as far as being nimble. Yeah, got a couple assists, got a couple rebounds. Yeah, I talked to Coach Robert Delu um, earlier, and he said that Josh Winbush would be ready to go, that he was a little bit sore, but that adrenaline's pumping, and it's championship Sunday, and here we go. BCC with the rebound off the uh, miss by Espino, who couldn't complete the three-point play. Vega gets it inside. Winbush. Ooh. Nice defensive play there by Monroe. That's going to be a tough matchup for Winbush, giving up at least 60 pounds. Yeah, 60 pounds. Both men listed at 6-7. Crossing over. Getting to the rack. Lays it up. No good. Monroe loses it. And Vega gets it but steps on the line. And Massasoit will get the basketball. Ooh, that's a, that's a risky pass right there in the backcourt, though. Tracking it down is Rolski Edward. And if you remember Edward, he was a pretty big scorer for this Massasoit team whenever Massasoit rolled to Fall River. Yeah, he's a guy that can he's a guy that could take over the game. Do you remember that? They have at least three or four shooters on this Massasoit team. And they did a great job yesterday against Bunker Hill. Shot clock winded down. Going. Oh, nice dish by Bellazos. Monroe has to put it up, but he gets it blocked by Winbush. Wimbush running the break, lays it up. Finger roll no good. Espinal is there, and he'll go to the line. Wimbush run the point. Yeah, this is definitely, like, like we say, going to be a very interesting match matchup between Monroe and Wimbush. Just two giants down facing off against each other. Both two are two different games. Josh Wimbush is a wiry, long you know, lengthy guy, more and more nimble, more athletic, can do things like we just seen him do right there, like run the break, run the floor. He's a good passer. Monroe's like more of a banger. A different kind of inside presence. Espinol buries two, BCC up 6-3. BCC getting in the backcourt with that pressure. And Marcus Mitchell doing what he's done so many times. And that's good steals. You talk about his hands all the time. He's got those quick hands. Yeah, active hands, very active presence on defense. That's for sure. And that's what BCC needs to do, attack the basketball and on defense. BCC, they need to dictate the pace out the gate, and that's what it looks like it's going to be right now. If BCC dictate the pace, fast break, and then attack the basketball when on defense like they're doing with, the, with their traps and their active hands and being aggressive, that's how they're going to win this game. If they dictate the pace, they will win this game. Mitchell misses both free throws. That won't win them the game. And BCC and, and on man, man Craig, top have, of the key, three-pointer, no good. Yeah, man, Bush. man defense from BCC, I've not seen that in quite a while. Stolen, going back the other way. Monroe, oh, almost blocked by Espinal. Coach Rabdell Lou doesn't like it. I thought that was a clean block. Thought so too, but no, they're saying he got a bit of Monroe on the play. No, they're calling the goaltend. Oh, okay then. That ball might have been on the glass on its way down. Ooh, nice defensive play there by Mark Georges. Put a little extra sauce in the block. You saw him just knock it way out of bounds. Looked like one of my volleyball spikes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like to play on the beach, you know. The beach volleyball? Yeah, I'm a beach uh, volleyball. That's my, that's my thing. Hey, summer's rolling around. That's it. Spring break coming up. <laughs> my skip pass. Espinel takes it in, hits that short jumper. That mid-range jumper that we talk about. 
Espinal is definitely, Espinal very good in the corner and very good at an angle. He's a good scorer. It could very easily be his day. It's the playoffs. You never know who's going to step up, and we've seen Driving it all the way to the hole, way off. Monroe with the rebound. Can't get it to fall. Winbush with another rebound. Mitchell pushing it up. Finds Vega. And they're going to call travel. That was a lot of... That was a lot of steps. Again, if you're just joining us, this game brought to you by FR Media. We're at Bunker Hill Community College, home of the Bulldogs, who lost yesterday in the semifinal. We thought this was going to be a home game of sorts. And it is not. Going around the back, Edward floats it up up there. <laughs> Only hits the glass. Espinal somehow wills it to Vega. Vega, oh yeah! Count it, and he's going to the line. Yeah, Zachary Vega getting fancy on them, lays it in for two. It's a good play by Juan Espinal getting the rebound. He didn't necessarily find the ball. The boar more or less found him, but with good, but with a good reaction time, he's able to pull it down and just toss it over to Vega. Yeah, he's seen Vega go in last second, and he willed it there because it didn't have much on it, but nonetheless, he got it there, and Vega took it the rest of the way and completes a three-point play, and BCC up 11 to five. And we remember how big Zachary Vega was in the game yesterday. Look yeah, at Zachary Vega was huge yesterday. He was our Bayhawks player of the game. BCC doing a great job playing man. Floater up there, no good. Rebound by Espinal. Yeah, Espinal doing a good job getting quick on the boards. Yeah, I like what he's doing right now. Hitting a couple jumpers, being aggressive on offense. Playing good D. Green going baseline, lays it in. Corey Green. And Corey Green, who had a quiet game yesterday, looking to turn things up. And you remember that. Corey Green's been kind of quiet the last couple of games we've seen him play. He's been one of their integral parts. Big time three-point shooter. He can get it going as well. We haven't seen that. If he starts getting going, watch out. Going to the rack. Eduardo floats it up there, lays it, lays it off the glass. Softly for two. Corey Green run the offense right now. Yeah, Alex Holloway out of the game. Yeah, Alex Holloway, we didn't see him a lot yesterday, and primarily been the last two games. Corey Green and Marcus Mitchell have both been acting as point guard. And Vega turns the ball over. They get the ball back. Yeah, that was a pretty risky, unnecessary pass. I just did not go Mitchell well. from three. Oh, Mitchell trying to go bombs away. Saving it. Saving it was real handy. What a hustle play there. Now getting it back. Handy. Kicks it back out. Look at Vega playing good D. In the paint. Oh, nice block. Seen it coming. Seen it coming all the way. Mitchell leads the break. Gets it to Espinal in motion. Oh, yes. With ease, Juan Espinal with the layup. There's nobody covering him. Espinal, does, he doesn't want it to be his final game. 15-7, BCC with the lead. That's the starting sophomore. He wants to go to New York. He wants to go to the Big Apple. Edward being guarded closely. Corey, BCC playing monster defense right now. We always talked about this was their game at the beginning of the season, this man defense. They're bringing it back on their biggest game that they're played. And I talked with Coach Rob Delu, and he says he likes the heat. If you notice, I'm always switching it up. And, yes, we've noticed that. He's always switching it up with the, with the defenses, but also with the players, too, the starting lineups and, um, and uh, the, the different lineups that we've seen in their period. But we know that BCC has a deep team. That they do. Two more players coming in. It's Alex Holloway back into the game. Malik Hester making his first appearance here in this game. And we call him, he is the muscle. The muscle and the hustle in this team. Rolski gets it to go with a trifecta. And uh, Massasoit, they need him to get going right now. New England championship game. Region 21, the New England region championship game here. The winner goes to New York to the Nationals. MM3, bombs away, can't get it to go. Loose ball, and who comes away with it? Hester. Jumper in the lane, no good. Loose ball, Massasoit's going to come away with it. Rayel Handy 
Gonna throw that ball out of bounds. Yeah, that, that's a bad pass. That's not a good pass. Just went out of his hand and skipped away. Just out of bounds to no man's land. Yeah, I didn't think he needed to. I didn't, I didn't think he needed to pass the ball. I think he had the, he had such momentum. I think he could have went all the way with it. And even if he had to pass it, he definitely jumped the gun on it. Should have taken at least a couple more steps before passing. Wimbush, and they're gonna call steps. A little bit too quick on that first step without putting the ball to the floor. Josh Winbush, six foot seven from Lake Charles, Louisiana, number four for BCC. It's been a heck of a first year for him. Trying to bring his team to a championship. 15 to 10 in the early going. It's early. BCC doing a good job on their switches. Going to the lane, and it's going to be a push off. It looks like it's on Hester. I think it is. Hester did foul out yesterday. At that point, the game was pretty much over. And calling it on Espinal, actually. They're going to call Espinal with the push. Four team fouls for Massasoit, only two for BCC. So both teams not threatening the bonus yet. And we did talk about this yesterday. It was BCC. They're always playing aggressive defense, but we never really see their players in foul trouble. We rarely ever see anyone foul out for BCC. Yeah, enough for, not for the most part. Not with any consistency. Once in a while, you'll see Zachary Vega maybe hanging around some uh, foul trouble. Juan Espinal will take a breather, get a drink of water. Bellozos hits the first free throw. Second free throw is good. Coming in the game for Massasoya. First sighting for this kid, Jared Costa Haywood. He's a sophomore guard from Stoughton, Massachusetts. Mark Bellozos will go out. Massasoya putting the pressure in. No, that's BCC basketball. The Warriors arguing it, but that very clearly went off Monroe last. Yeah, Mitchell. No, Mitchell passed that, and he got knocked off. I don't know. We're way up here. I don't They're know. They're complaining that they like think Hester knocked it last, but I am 90% sure uh, Monroe was the last one to touch it. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Mitchell falls back. Hits the three. M, M, three. A good move on the run was Marcus Mitchell. Marcus Mitchell with the three, and it's 18 to 12. Ten minutes and 20 seconds left in this first half. I think we have a referee timeout here. It's going to be Warriors basketball. Oh, we have a technical foul. Yeah, technical foul, and the Warriors going to send Zachary Vega to the line. One thing that you can't do in a championship game is give another team, especially a team like Bristol, extra chances, extra shots to put more points in the board. Put your team at a disadvantage. And Vega will sink the second one. We talk about Zachary Vega, the leading scorer for this BCC team, Craig. He had a, he had a phenomenal game yesterday that he did, from he was, start to finish. That he did. He was up and down and all around. He had over 20 points, over 10 rebounds. He was perfect from beyond the arc, went three for three, and just had the probably the most complete game that we've seen from him. Most definitely. And he's already recorded a block on defense. Ooh, so going through the trap is Costa. Gets it to Monroe. Monroe can't connect on the inside. No, he isn't using his size to his advantage, really. Like, it, not just his height, but just, like, his body presence. He's not using it. He's not really boxing out in order to score. Right. He's not using that body to be physical. And with, with the lineup that BCC has in there, I mean, we know that Malik Muhammad Hester, number 21 for BCC, we know that he's a load. And Artic Oban is 6'6". Six but Monroe, he's six foot seven, like 270, like easy. 270, 280, easy. He's a, he's a house. Misses the first free throw. Josh Winbush is out of the game, too. So this, this should be a time for, um, this should be a time for Mark Monroe to, um, to rack up right now. Vega, just being trapped in the corner. Gets it inside to Hester. Hester, nice flip to Artic Bond. Gets it blocked by Monroe. Edward, now with the basketball for the Warriors. Thinking about three, going to the rack, around Hester. Nice play there by Mark Georges. Ooh, risky pass there. Holloway, oh, oh nice little pass. shuffle pass there to Hester. Oh. 
And then I think and Hester followed up. Yeah, Hester followed up with a foul. Yeah, and Hester, Hester upset with himself there. That was an absolute perfect dish by Holloway. Hester just can't complete on the oh, other side. Oh, it was such a nice little underhand, little shuffle, no look pass there by Holloway. We've seen that time, from uh, time and time again from him. He's like the master of the no look pass. He doesn't like to look when he passes. No, exactly. And he's a pass for he's a pass first point guard. And we've been seeing, like we said, we've been seeing plays like him ever since he started playing on this team for the second half of the year. But again, well, just couldn't connect on that one. Well, Hester couldn't connect on that one. That was a good, that was a great pass yeah. by Holloway. No, Holloway did everything correct. Yeah, he did, sure it did. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our leaders, our leaders of the game, brought to you by all of our friends at FR Media. Uh, Mr. Champagne Poppy, 938 left here in the first half. Tell us some of our Bayhawks leaders. Uh, right now, leading right now for the Bayhawks in points, Juan Espinal is actually up with eight. He has eight points out of BCC's 19. And then uh, for rebounds, uh, it's actually, of course, it's Josh Winbush with four. And then Juan Espinal is right behind him with three. So Juan Espinal in the early going having himself a pretty good game. And that's big to see. That's very big to see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's our... BCC leaders of the game. 9.38 left to play here. First half action, New England Regional Championship. Here on FR Media, 19 to 15, Bristol Community College. The boys from the river in this battle of Route 24. Both college campuses separated by about 30 miles. 25, 30 miles right down the road from each other. As Sawyer trying to get in their offense. BCC in man to man. They've been doing it well. Five on the shot clock. Got to get something going to the hole. Edward, that's going to be an offensive. Is that offensive? It is. Yes, it is. It is. By Mal and Malik Muhammad Hester setting the pick and drawing the foul. He does a great job of that. I think he's taking the most charges on this BCC team. Oh, definitely. In, 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 a, in, a less than, in a less than expanded role. Mitchell. I don't know what he was trying to do with it, but, Mitchell, but uh, Hester comes away with it. That ball's going to go off Edward. Yeah. Going to remain BCC basketball. Your boy Corey Green coming in for Marcus Mitchell. Massasoit was shooting lights out yesterday. They have, they have a good foursome with Edward, Mark Georges, Rayel Handy, and uh, Bobby Bellazos, who can all hit from deep. Damian Martin, he's in there. Number two. Vega. Now Winbush. Winbush, rainbow jumper. Can't get it to fall. Coming away with it is Rayal Handy. I tell you, this Massasoit defense, it's really, they've really turned up to second gear. They sure have. It's kind of been underrated. We've been talking about BCC's defense so much, but Massasoit doing a good job in their end. It's only 19 to 15, yeah, folks. They're playing a deep three. Costa Hayward drains it home. Down the drain. One point lead. And they're playing a zone defense, but they are trapping extraordinarily well on players. And we talked about this yesterday with BCC. They're so quick. Massasoit's been so quick on defense. Oh, and Martin with steps. You're exactly right. BCC is so quick to the basketball. They're so quick with that trap. And Massasoit really pulling a page out of their book. They're doing that exactly right now. They're doing the exact same thing. These teams have faced each other three times now. They know the book on each other. This game is going to go down to the wire. And like you said, it's hard to beat a team three times in a row. Hard to get that TKO, baby. Uh, I think it's a foul on Martin. Yeah, Martin with a reach in. Damian Martin, number two. Juan Espinal will come in for Malik Muhammad Hester. Espinal having a decent game so far. Now, Damian Martin, number two, and number four, Josh Winbush, both former high school teammates just last year. 
both from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Going all the way to the rack, strong, slicing through the BCC defense like Swiss cheese is Rayal Handy. And, BC, and Massasoit has got the lead now, 20 to 19. 7.34 to play in the first half. Corey Green, we know him as one of the uh, premier three-point shooters in all of Region 21 this year. He's had a great year from beyond the arc. And, um, but the last handful of games, he's um, struggled to find that CG3 stroke. Usually I'm saying CG3 like religiously, but. Yeah, he did it. He had a very, very good first half of the year, but ever since coming back from break, just hasn't been quite the same. We do see flashes, though, here and there, where he will hit three or four. But, again, something's just been off. Yeah, he seems a little bit hesitant. Ooh, losing that basketball was Rayal Handy. Looked like he lost control of it. Wimbush, nice to a streaking Vega. I think he wanted to jam it there, but he got pinned by the rim. I don't know if he wanted the jam. He just might not have good positioning, but either way, no basket. It seemed like he got caught up in between trying to decide whether he wanted to lay it in or jam it. Yeah. And we've seen that several times. In the corner for three, it's going to come up short. BCC with the rebound in the hands of Alex Holloway. Ooh, thought that ball was going to go out of bounds. Green. Going amongst the trees, gets it to go, gets it to go. And Green. A, and that's a great move by Corey Green. As you said, amongst the trees, had three defenders way taller than him, still manages to get the basket to go. How did he get that over Monroe? Magic. Stepping back, three-point shot, gets it to fall. And he has and a chance at a four-point play. That was no chip shot. Rayal Handy, that was a deep three. And if you saw, he actually kind of put his legs out maybe as a way to try to get Holloway to foul him. That's a Curry move. And it worked. That's something that, that's something that Curry, your boy Curry would do. Hey, if he makes it, gives him the lead, gets the extra points on the board. Going for the four-point play. Handy. Can't get it. Can't get the four-point play. And um, BCC, it's going to be BCC basketball. All right, we are in championship mode, championship Sunday. Boston, Massachusetts, the site. City of champions. And the regional championship going on right now. <laughs> They'll jump it in. Vega. Oh, nice defensive play there by... Nice defensive play play there by Jared Costa Hayward coming out of nowhere knocking that ball out of bounds. Yeah, we've been seeing this Massasoit team do that quite a bit, very quick on their feet. Vega turns around. Wimbush trying to tip it home. Referee going to say the clock never started. The game clock, the game clock nor the, the, um, the shot clock started. So I think they're going to restart this. 5.58 to play in the first half. We're deadlocked at 23. 17 fouls. 17 fouls for BCC. Six for Massasoya. And they're going to say it's Massasoya basketball? Yeah, that's a tough break for BCC. How do you figure that? Possession arrow in Massasoit's favor. Yeah, B yeah, BCC, they had possession there. They called the, the violation, so yeah, I don't know. They're going to get the ball right back anyway. Yeah, Corey Green with the basketball. Trying to force it to Winbush, gets it stolen. Yeah, Massasoit really locking down Winbush. They are taking him out of this equation. They really are. Winbush needs, a, Winbush needs to get a... You know what across his butt right now. And I don't think Winbush has scored at all in this game. Mm -hmm. 
No, They're Josh gonna... Winbush so far has zero points across the board. So Mazasoya really shutting him down, and we talked about that matchup between Monroe and Winbush. That along with, again, Massasoit's defense just really taking the big man out of the equation. Winbush needs to start establishing himself. He needs to start getting tough, tough down there. Holloway. Holloway back with the basketball. That's his spot right there. Hits it. Nails that shot. He loves that shot from the, um, from the elbow or from the top of the key. Yeah, pull up mid-range jumper, getting the points on the board. It's pretty. It's so pretty. 25-23. BCC with a slim lead. Five, in the first, five minutes to go in the first half. This guy's out dribbling himself right now. Yeah, he's, he's breaking his own ankles. <laughs> he has dribble city. Oh, they, Vega uh, with the steal. And the foul is going to be simultaneously made by uh, Jared Costa Hayward. Vega's going to go to the line there, Champagne. Hopefully BCC will be uh, popping the champagne tonight. Those that are over 21, of course. Uh, the few sophomore, the few sophomores on the yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. We don't promote underage drinking here on uh, this Bayhawk station. Non-alcoholic champagne. <laughs> exactly. What is it? The like the little wine spritzer, like the little um, yeah, some, something like, like that. The little uh, whatever. <laughs> some like sparkling apple cider. Like sparkling, yeah. It's like yeah, exactly. Vega gets the first one to go. 26-23. Massasoit had a, had a slim lead for a minute. BCC regained it right back, and now they have a four-point lead. There's a double team at half court. Well, oh, I thought he picked his dribble up. Going to the rack strong. And he's going to get the foul call. Mark Georges will go to the line. Neither team has that one player who's really standing out, that's really taking control of this game. Who's going to be that player that's really going to take their team down the stretch and take control of this game for their team? Like There, there, there isn't that one guy who's having this um, outlandish, outlandish, outstanding game right now. There isn't that one standout guy that's really done too much in this first half to, to establish themselves as that guy. No, once both teams really start to get going on offense, the other team's defense is just there to stop them in their tracks. Yeah, I think both teams kind of feeling each other out right now. 27-23, both teams kind of stuck in the mud right now. Not a lot of scoring. Still four minutes and 32 seconds left. Superman Steve Reese on the camera today. Doing a great job as, as usual. Also want to thank Steve Reese providing the transportation today. <laughs> and that fancy jet of his. Loose ball on the floor after the miss. Jump ball. This has to go BCC's way now. And it will. I think on that last, um, when they didn't stop the clock, I think they kind of treated that as a jump ball because they started it. I think, I think that's what to happen there. Yeah, that makes sense. Position now, yeah. Massoya, they're matching up man as well. Oh, going with the floater. Loose ball. Ugly shot there by Hester. Yeah, didn't, didn't get enough, uh, enough power under it. Well, no, not well short. <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. Ooh, down low. Kicking it back out. 15 on the shot clock. Corey Green. It's all over. He's all over Roski Edward right now. Good defense by Green. Seven yeah. on the shot clock. Going to the rack. Can't get it to fall. Ooh. What the heck is going on? That's very hard nosed <laughs> oh, basketball boy. right now. Give me that basketball. Give me that wow. basketball. And Holloway goes diving Wimbush into the won. crowd to save it. Great hustle by him. Green floats it up. Hester with a strong rebound, muscling it up there, and in. That's what he does. That was one of the most interesting sequences of basketball we've seen all season. Definitely not the prettiest, but both definitely teams, one of the most interesting. Yeah, both teams ripping the ball out of each other's hands. It reminded me of Monday Night Raw. Three-point shot is good. 
Bobby Belazos for three. Now we're starting to get some action. And we knew this was going to be back and forth. Winbush floats it up there. Rainbow jumper is good. And that's something I've always wondered about was Josh Winbush's range, but he's showing that he can shoot mid-range there. Yeah, looking like Akeem Olajuwon, old school, that little rainbow, little jumper, three-pointer. Not no good. Holloway pushing it the other way. Doesn't have the numbers. Slips it to Vega. Vega throws that back out. It gets stolen. And a foul by Winbush. I guess he had no choice there. No, he, he was dead set on the hoop, was number five. Mark, Mark Georges. Mark Georges. He was dead set on the he was dead set going into the basket. Wimbush didn't have great positioning on him. Yeah. Probably was, tried to go for the ball, but if he was gonna get Georges, oh well. Well Wimbush had speed and agility, but he was kind of trapped on the island there. Georges was going full throttle towards the basket. There's no way that Wimbush was gonna keep up with him, I don't think. Although he has the length to block shots, but I think it was one of those things where he had to kind of make him make him earn it at the line. Number 22 coming in, Anthony Cabrera. I think this is the first time we're seeing him in this game. Yeah, we haven't seen a Cabrera. Head coach Jim Stapleton, he doesn't use his bench the way that um, Coach Rob Delu uses his bench. Mark Georges makes both free throws, and just like that, it is now a two-point lead again. Every time BCC, and we have a timeout on the court. Massoya calls a timeout. We'll keep it here. So BCC, every time they, they seem to pull away just a little bit, Massasoya, they're hanging right in there. And the story of the game right now, Josh Winbush not, not getting on the scoreboard. It seems like he wants to be the point guard out there. Yeah, right now he's got two points so far. Throughout. Oh, he does have the two. He does have the two. He hit that That's right, he hit shot. that rainbow jumper. That's right. Keep me in line. But again, has not been able to really do much in the post. to This Massasoya defense has just been locking him down. Every chance they tr that BCC tries to pass it to him, they just immediately collapse on Winbush. You got the four or five players really just surrounding Winbush. And the Warriors, nine times out of ten, have come away with the basketball. Yeah, they're like, um, is exactly. When he, when he gets the ball down low, they are on him like, like a rat pack, man. They are there on him like a bunch of buzzards. But still, he's because of that, he's he's floating around in the outside. That's not his game. He can hit that jumper once in a while if it's open, but that's not his game to be floating around the perimeter like that or or just in no man's land. He needs to be in the paint getting something going. Wimbo sets a pick, sets a set in the screen. Holloway goes the other way. They're trying to force it into him. And they're playing good defense on Winbush, man. Yep, exactly. Just right there. Just collapse on Winbush and you get another steal. Screen set by Monroe. Corner shot. Three. It's good. And another chance for another four point play. Corey Green got caught reaching. Yes. Rolski Edward with a three point shot gets fouled. And Corey Green, as you said, Craig, with the reach in foul. And another chance for a four-point play. You don't see this all the time. No, we've seen it twice in the same half. And unlike the last guy, he does complete the four-point play. 33 to 31. Massasoit has a lead. Vega for three in the corner. No good. Holloway fighting for it. And a jump ball call going Massasoit's way. It looked like Holloway had possession, but it's a jump ball. Did you see Roman Reigns or Brock Lesnar on Monday Night Raw like uh, ripping the title out of each other's hands? That's what that's what that last that's what couple, that was like. That possession, um, yeah, a few possessions ago when they were ripping the ball out of each other's hands. That's what it reminded me of. <laughs> BCC with that trap at half court. Oh wow, what a pass there to get it to Georges. Floats it up there, no good. Mitchell comes away with it. Minute 30 to play. Vega steps behind the three-point line. Can't get it to go. Georges with the rebound. Georges darting towards the basket, gets the contact. And Malik Muhammad Hester wanted to get the charge there. 
didn't quite have the position. Nope. Step into the line is Mark Georges. And he'll go to the line for two. Both teams in the bonus. BCC has 10 team fouls. And it wasn't, didn't it seem just like a second and go? They only had two. Yeah, both teams are really just on both ends on defense and offense just really starting to rack up the fouls. And this game stays close, which I, I expect it to. I expect it to stay close like this. And if both teams keep fouling, it may just come down to who makes their free throws. And we know BCC hasn't done a great job hitting free throws. Mark Georges hits two, 35 to 31. Massasoit has the lead. BCC finds themselves in a position where they haven't found themselves in a few games. And that's trailing. And just like that, it's another foul, this time on Massasoit. And that's their ninth. And this is going to send Malik Hester to the line. And this will be a one and one. One and one situation. And Hester, BCC, struggles from the line. Hester can't get it to fall. Massasoit trying to extend this lead. One minute left. Monroe, nice screen there. Looking for the pick and roll. Bellazos for three. BB, no good. Vega high for the rebound. They got less than a minute to go in the first half. The Warriors still up by four. Yeah, they've done a good job taking this lead. Yeah, BCC still looking to at least get the momentum going into the second half. Yeah, they need something here. Mitchell up top. Espinal, that's his shot. Bounces up. Hester. And they're going to keep it on. Ooh, that looked close, but they're going to call it on. They're going to call it off Massasoya. And there's going to be about a one second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Corey Green. Going up, gets it blocked by Monroe, trying to throw it off Green. Green re recalibrates, can't get it to go. And I'm just amazed Corey Green got that many chances on the play. And they're going <laughs> to keep it BCC basketball. Wow. What the? And the Massasoit faithful, oh. not too happy with the call. And we were talking about how we were relishing the fact we were, we were going to get the home crowd, Bunker Hill Community College, Bulldogs crowd, but Massasoya, they get a very vocal crowd as well. And Coach Rob Delu going to call a timeout, get his team ready. I know he's not liking what he's seeing right now. Offensively, BCC, they've been a little bit inept. I mean, their defense is there. Massasoya making some miracle plays here with their, you know, um, their three-point shots and also getting the foul, which is basically the difference in this game, and they're, and they're hitting their free throws. 35 to 31, 19.6 to play here in the first half. BCC has the possession arrow in their favor. And we talk about this team without Josh Winbush, how they're still a very uh, very competitive team. But the thing is, is it's not just that they don't have Josh Winbush. The Bayhawks right now have pretty much no game in the post right now because of uh, Massasoit's defense. That's literally just trap defense in the post. And a lot of times, BCC's offense, they do come from in the post. It comes from driving. It comes from boxing out and scoring. And they just have not been able to do that. Well, BCC is also a, a lot better team when they're, when they're in fast break mode, when they're, when they're getting steals, when they're creating turnovers off their pressure defense and dictating the pace and, and going up and down. In the half-court set, it's a little bit when they struggle. And Massasoya doing a great job playing half-court defense. Loose ball. Mitchell finds Corey Green for three. No good. Espinal oh, trying to tip it. Oh, that. he had a shot at it. He was close. He was close. It was a great effort, but he almost had it. Good effort by Juan Espinal. Corey Green couldn't connect. Still struggling from the outside. And um, less than high scoring first half, 35-31. BCC basically had the lead most of the first half, but Massasoit turned on the Jets, and they have a halftime Lead of 35 to 31. Okay, it's David Cardozo and Champagne Poppy on the call from Bunker Hill Community College. It is halftime here in the New England Region Championship. Stay tuned for a second half action. We'll be back right after this. All right, welcome to the Bayhawks halftime report. I'm David Cardozo alongside me is Champagne Poppy. First half, 35 to 31. The Massasoit Community College Warriors have the lead 
over BCC. BCC, they're having a tough time on the offensive end right now. Yeah, both teams really struggling in offense. This game has all been all about defense. BCC playing a very aggressive man defense, but I'm really impressed by Massasoit's zone defense. They've taken BCC's post game completely out of the equation, limiting Josh Winbush, who would usually be in double figures by now, to just two points on the game. BCC again right now, their leading scorer is Juan Espinal. He only has eight points, though. And again, just what is just a low-scoring game? Again, it's the story has just been defense in this game. And we have uh, one half, one half to go. It's you know, for a, you know, for a championship. And right now, BCC really kind of sludging in the mud right now. And as you said, Josh Winbush being taken out by this Massasoit group. They're doing a great job of collapsing on him. They're attacking him on defense. And um, Josh Winbush is really being taken out of this game. He's out there, you know, um, luring around on the, um, on the perimeter, really being taken out of the post. When it does come down to post, they're attacking him and they're stripping the ball from him. Yeah, and even Josh Wimbush's only points in this game, that was from a jump shot you saw. It wasn't even him in the post. He was outside the perimeter. So, yeah, again, it's definitely going to see interest what uh, Coach Rob Delu talked to them during halftime and definitely see where BCC goes on offense from here out. Yeah, BCC definitely needs to dictate the pace. When they dictate the pace, when they're going up and down in transition, that's when BCC is at their best. We know that, Craig. We've seen it time and time again. You know, they're an agile, they're an athletic team. They have the better athletes when they're going when they're going up and down. You know that's when they're at their best. So hopefully, you know BCC can get it going here in the second half. There, Champagne Poppy. All right, so we're getting getting ready for a second half action. This is the England Region Championship, and we'll see if BCC can turn up the heat. getting ready for a second half action. I want to give a shout out to uh, President Jack Sprague. Jack Sprague met with him yesterday. Said you are doing a fine job. I want to tell him I appreciate that compliment. The great president of our school, longtime president Jack Sprague. Top of the key, jumper. Starting the second half the right way. Alex, do not call me Alexander Holloway with a deuce. Broadcasting from Boston, second half of this New England Regional Championship, NJCAA, second half underway. It's Cardoza and Champagne Poppy bringing you this game via FR Media from Bunker Hill Community College. Jumper, no good. Rebounded by Winbush. And Winbush has been good on the rebounds. We do want to give him that. It, again, they've taken him out of the equation in the post, but he is still able to get rebounds. They're flashing Winbush high. Holloway taking it strong, but then kicks it back out. Vega takes it in, top of the key. Wimbush going high over the back. Corey Green, new 24, BCC with the offensive rebound. Nice look by Holloway, finds Espinal in the paint, and Espinal floats it up for the deuce. And BCC ties the game, Craig. And Juan Espinal, the first player for BCC in double figures, gets 10 points so far. 35-35, just underway. Going all the way to the hole and scoring it is Rayal Handy. All the way down to Vega. Got fouled, couldn't get it to fall though, but Vega will go to the line. Vega will go to the line for two. And we saw a lot of fouls in the first half and we may or may not see it continue here in the second. And we've seen a relatively low scoring affair in the first half. BCC only scoring 31 points. But we know that BCC can go from 0 to 60 in a heartbeat. There's a couple games that I can remember offhand where they've, where they've been shorted in the first half, and in the second half they turned on the Jets. They can easily put up a 65, 70-point half when they get going in all cylinders. Vega with a second free throw coming up. And Vega has been proving that if, he, if anyone on this team is going to get fouled, you want it to be him. He's 6 for 7 from the line. He's a very good two-way player. He can get it, get it done on both ends. 
37 to 37. Belazos gets it inside to Monroe. Kicking it back out. Again, BCC playing that good man-to-man. -man. Forcing Massasoya to go deep into the shot clock. Edward for three, no good. Another rebound by Winbush. Wimbush leading the break and he'll throw that out of bounds. Yeah, Aaron pass, couldn't get it to Holloway or Espinal, just too far over their heads. Wimbush likes to bring up the core and he's got decent handle and he's fast, but you get to get that to a point guard, young man. Jumper from the free throw line is good. He has such an interesting jump shot. He, like, naturally spreads his legs out like that. <laughs> so I commented earlier, it looked like he was trying to draw a foul, but no, I think that's just how he shoots. Yeah, he's trying to do the jump man. Espinal, corner three, side that's, pocket, it's that's good. That's his shot. Juan Espinal with you the do, trifecta. You do not want to catch Juan Espinal in the corner because he will knock it down. <laughs> 40 to 39, BCC regains the lead. Pressure being turned up here at Bunker Hill. Bellozos, Bobby Bellozos in the corner for three, and BCC again. Foul on Espinal this time. BCC again following, following Merritt, the Warriors on a three-point attempt. Yep. And Couldn't get that one to fall, though, but he is going to get still a chance for a three-point play. Bobby Bellozos is a six-foot freshman guard from Holbrook, Massachusetts. A lot of these players, obviously, from Brockton or the surrounding areas. Stoughton, Quincy, Bridgewater. Massasoit Community College in Brockton, Massachusetts. Bristol Community College in Fall River. It's the Battle of Brockton and Fall River here. First free throw is made. It's actually his second. He's made two for two. He has his chance for his third. And that is three, and that is three. 43 to 40. Thanks for keeping me in check. That's why you're poppy. Hmm. That was uh that was Bellows. He was uh he's one of the premier three point shooters on this Warriors team and can definitely knock it down from the free throw line. Most definitely. Holloway skipping a jump. Oh, Winbush with the follow can't get it to go. Espinal fighting his way in and gets it to go. Espinal going off right now. Espinal having a daggone good game. Yeah, 15 points for the spectacular sophomore. Driving to the hole. And a block. Nice block by Espinal. Georges picks up his dribble. Oh, they're saying it was off Espinal, though. Espinal almost got the steal, but it just took a, a, took a bounce out of bounds for, like, a quarter of a second. Yeah, but kudos to Espinal for being there and being draped all over him on defense. And Espinal may have a career game if he keeps it up. Bellozos in the corner for three. Going to bounce up. And Vega gets the rebound. Oh, should have held on to that. Going to the hole and scoring it is Rayel Handy. Wow, it's either on Windbush or it's on Holloway. I believe it's on Holloway and it is. Great job by Vega to mix it up and get the rebound. Yeah, he was falling out of bounds, though. He just tried to get rid of it, just did not throw in the right place. Handy can't connect in the three-point play. Here's Holloway at the point, being guided by Handy. What about that matchup? Holloway puts it up, and he gets it to go. We talk about him being a pass for his point guard, but he do, he is able to pick his spots well, and he's able to do it there. They need to pick. They need him to pick many more spots. 44 to 44. Someone needs to establish themselves as the man. Proud of getting into it. We're packed. We're jam packed here in Boston. Unlike yesterday, stands a full for this championship contest. And again, just going to throw it off Juan Espinal. I think Juan Espinal thinks this is a soccer game, <laughs> using those quick feet. I think we're going to see a lot more scoring. I think we're going to see things turn up a notch. It's championship time. The New England Regional Championship on the line. 
in this battle of Route 24. The number one seed versus the number two seed. The two best teams in Region 21 are going at it. Bellozos can't get it to fall. Yeah, it's going to go off Josh Winbush if you just joined us here on FR Media. Mass Sawyer in the dark green uniforms. Bristol in white with the green trimming. Look at that matchup down there. I'm looking at Monroe and Winbush. Oh, what a block by Winbush. Holloway finds Corey Green in the open court. Green to the hole, lays it in. BCC regains the lead, 46-44. Yeah, you talked about their ability to score on the fast break. Good steal by Corey Green. Green to the rack. Nice, oh, nice lay in. Way to use his body, way to position his body and be controlled. And it's plays like that is what made Corey Green such a dynamite in the first half of the season. If you can hear those beaches playing, it sounds like a stick of dynamite going off in here. 48-44, BCC with the lead. Under 15 to play. We're getting turned up. They stepped out of bounds, BCC Monroe. basketball. And maybe this is something that can give BCC a little bit of a jump start. Yeah, BCC a couple good possessions in making Massasoit commit uh, commit a mistake, making Monroe step out of bounds. Holloway going to take his time with it, really direct the play. And again, they get another good possession here. BCC that's, has all the momentum. That's why I want to see the ball in. Corey Green for three. Corey gets Green. it to go. Corey Green. C G three. Corey, the money man for three. Corey Green with the heat check. Corey Green is really turning things up and turning this BCC offense around. Three quick plays and seven points for the man who wears 15. Yeah, Corey Green, we said that he needs to get it going. We said, who's gonna get it going? It could be Corey Green. Corey Green almost going, for, almost getting another steal. Yeah, he plays that poachy defense, always playing off of his defender for moments like that. Wow, way off. Air ball, yeah. air ball by Handy. And maybe the nerves getting a little bit into the Warriors players. Wimbush back out, and that was a close play there. They're gonna call a foul on Georges making contact with Holloway. Massasoit took control of this game late in the first half. And they were playing good defense. Right now, BCC has control. They have a seven point lead. A lot of time to go though. Holloway in the corner to Vega. They're, double, they're doing a good job of double teaming them. And there's a steal. Yeah, of course, mistake. Vega had, couldn't really throw it anywhere. He threw it right to the Warriors. Going up. Edward can't get it to go. Rebounded by Vega. Look who's running with him. Corey Green. Oh, nice block there. Nice defense there by Mark, by Mark Georges. And yep. that's where you get to throw a bounce pass. Yeah, Vega saw the man that he wanted to pass it to. He wanted to get it to Corey Green, but like you said, tried the chest yeah. pass, did not work out. You got, you, got to get the, you got to get that guy to commit, and then you got to throw a bounce pass around him. But nonetheless, it's going to be um, it's going to be the possession arrow is going to be in Massasoit's favor, 51 to 44. So BCC coming out of the second half gate, guns are blazing. CG three needed he needed to see that ball go through the hole from beyond the arc because he was struggling. He was struggling from there for the last few games or so. He hasn't been consistent like we've seen him be but it's good to see uh, CG3 live up to that moniker right there. Yeah, Corey Green quiet throughout the first half, all, quickly up to 13 points now going for the second half. And that's good to see. Both teams with only two team fouls so far, but we know that can get uh, turned up pretty quick. Yeah, if the first half was any implication, like we said, it stays close and the fouls keep coming up, it'll really just come down to who makes their free throws. That's for sure, and, and this the intensity being turned up, the volume being turned up in this building right now here at Bunker Hill Community College. If you say anything is going BCC's way, they definitely have the fan support. That's for sure. They brought it with them today. Three-pointer by Belazos. No good. Rebounded by Hester. And Belazos starting to struggle from the outside. He's missed a couple in his last few attempts. And that's not good for the Warriors faithful. Holloway, ooh, another no-look pass, but deflected. That's a big hit from Hester. Massasoit doing a good job of crowding the paint. Anytime a pass goes in there, they're doing a good job of fronting whoever their offensive player is, getting in front and knocking that ball away. They're doing a great job 
on Winbush. Every time they go to dump it into Winbush, they have a guy in front of them and a guy in back of them. They have a guy in front of them and a guy in back. So they're not able to just dump it into Wimbush like a lot of times like they like to do. So yeah. they're taking away that weapon. Yeah, these teams know each other very well. They've been playing each other a few times throughout the course of the season, and they know how to handle Josh Wimbush. <laughs> they're handling Josh Wimbush, I would say. Wimbush quiet. Can you get inside Monroe? Monroe stuck behind the basket. Foul, it's going to be on Hester or Wimbush. Yeah, that's a poor play. Use your feet. And it's on Hester again, quickly three. Yeah, that's not a good foul. Monroe, Monroe was behind the basket, so it didn't really need to. Uh, the foul there was definitely unnecessary. They're going to say it's not on the shot, so they're going to say it is. They're going to say it's before the shot, so Monroe will actually inbound for the Warriors. 15 on the shot clock. In the corner, Pelozo is going to bring it in this time. He's going to go. He they're gonna, yeah, they're going to call him for steps. I think the PA announcer is actually uh, trying to step his game up for his standard. Hey, you were a fan of him yesterday. <laughs> I was. Oh, Green thought about it. Yeah, they're, they're doing the same thing. They can't get inside to Winbush. Nine on the shot clock. Got to get something going. Corey Green for three. That's the He's going to get fouled. That's the big time heat check. And the Warriors. The Warriors out there on the perimeter fouling Green. So they return BCC the favor. And Corey Green's going to go to the line for three. Yeah, we really haven't seen too many uh, fouls on three-pointers throughout this season. What is this, the third or fourth time today we've seen it? Yeah, exactly. It's not something that happens too regularly and Corey Green misses the free throw Corey Green in last week's game down the stretch against Bunker Hill in that final in the MCC AC matchup had two free throws to seal that deal and missed both free throws that was that was a tough go and luckily BCC escaped out of there the champions second free throw is good Corey Green makes the last two though and BCC has their largest lead of the game, 53 to 44. Yeah, nine point lead. As you said, it's been very close up this entire game. And the Warriors, I don't think they're gonna let up like they, uh, North Essex did yesterday. No, they're not. And BCC, this is the largest lead for either team, a nine point lead. 11 and a half minutes to go. Getting loud in here. Eight in the shot clock. Going to the hole, nice bounce pass. Oh, and a block by Winbush. What are they saying, goaltending? Yeah, they are. That was close. I don't know about that. That, that was close. Uh, as you said, it was close, but they're saying the ball was on its way down. Hell of a block there by Winbush. A hell of an effort, but again, sometimes just doesn't go always your way. That's for sure. Espinel high. Dumps it in. Winbush, they're going to call a foul on Monroe. But no shot. They're going to call it on the pass, on the entry pass. They're going to call a foul. Belozos will go out of the game. Number 15, Jared Costa Hayward. The sophomore will come in for him. And as you said, the Warriors not using their bench the way that Coach Rob Del Coach Rob Delu likes to use his bench. Rob Delu sometimes uses his bench like a like hockey lines. It's like, oh, nice! Oh, what athletic play by Winbush Mitchell with a nice pass there, but Winbush had to reach back, couldn't quite grasp it. Handy, trying to dribble out of trouble. There's going to be another reach in on Corey Green. Corey Green always acts like the little kid who's got his hand uh, stuck in the cookie jar. Yeah, I was just going to say, Corey Green's reactions to drawing a foul is always the best thing. Who, who me? Who me? I, I, I only smacked him across the face. Who me? 53 to 46. It is only Corey Green's second foul. Luckily, because he's having himself a game so far. Cross-court pass. Faking the shot, going up the floater. Rolls out. Can't get it to go. Winbush got the rebound. That yeah, Warriors started full court and decided to get back on defense. And they are back on defense. Corey Green, short. Thought he got fouled there. No, and Hester has came up with a rebound, and they just collapsed on him. Took the ball right away from him. That's a lot of contact, but no fouls called until that. 
until that play right there, a loose ball foul. Looks like it's going to be on BCC. And it's on Winbush, and you are correct. That's Winbush's third. Poppy, we, we talked about how this thing can go from 0 to 60 as far as fouls are concerned. 16 fouls for BCC now. It looks like, like just a minute ago they had two. Yeah, they had their largest lead, and right now one more foul. And that ball is going to sail into the crowd. And as I was, yeah, BCC will catch a break. They will get the ball again. BCC, they call us one more foul. Massasoit can find themselves right back in because Massasoit has been doing a better job foul shooting than BCC has in this game. They sure have. Alex Holloway will come in. Alex Holloway, number three. Oh, nice pass. Nice job to find Vega. They collapse on him, though. Espinal for three. Gets it to go. Boom. Juan Espinal having himself a game. Have yourself a game, young fella. Espinal with another three, bringing this back up to nine. Yeah, Espinal has 17 points on the game. Driving to the hole, nice pass. And Monroe will go to the floor. That can't be on Espinal. We it hope is. it's not on Espinal because Espinal has been, in my estimation, Espinal has been the best player on the court today. He might, have, he might have bumped him because it, it definitely wasn't on the block attempt. He, he totally whiffed. But either way, they're calling it on Espinal. Yeah, Monroe went, to the, Monroe went to the floor like he was shot. Monroe not having himself a good game. No, Monroe has not been good from the foul line. And again, BCC has really kept him trapped underneath the post. When you talk about Monroe, wow, this, <laughs> wow, this crowd is getting loud. We're not used to this. Second free throw was good by Monroe. This crowd getting loud. Yeah, playoff basketball, it changes people. You can feel the madness. 55 to 47. It's March Madness inside this building right now. The winner goes to New York for the Nationals. Loose ball on the court. Foul, I believe. I think it's on Holloway. Yeah, it's going to be on a BCC player, a loose ball. 18 fouls now for BCC. Massasoya with a lot of time left on the court. Massasoya is in the bonus right now. So going to the line right now is Rayal Handy. The foul is on number three, Alex Holloway. That's his fourth. And they can't. No, BCC definitely does not want him out of this game. Yeah, being the floor general, being the player that he's been in the second half. I think they're counting because they think there's a. I think they're counting his fouls. They're uh, discussing whether he has three or four. I didn't think it was four, but. And there's a lot of time left in this game. An eight-point lead. Definitely not insurmountable. We know that. And definitely um, doesn't feel like an eight-point lead, even though it's a, one of the biggest leads they've had. Second free throw, no good. Our first free throw, I should say, no good. Holloway with the basketball. Holloway somehow gets it between those defenders. Has one off a three. Man, he couldn't get that one. Couldn't connect on that one. Handy in the open court. Gives it right back to BCC. Mitchell pushing. Mitchell oh, gonna, is on a player, though. And they're going to call a travel. They're going to call a travel there. Massasoya, their defense... I'm very impressed with the way they're playing defensively. Yeah, their defense has been shut down throughout this game. And again, going in the second half, and right now in these last few possessions, they've really kicked it up into second gear. There's definitely no doubt about that. Kicking it back out. That's a deep three. Way off. Getting his own rebound in the paint. Putting it up. No good. And they're going to say it's off Espinal. Yeah, Monroe took a swipe at it. It looked like it was going to be off of him, but no, they're saying Espinal touched it last. Great job by great job by Handy following his own shot, getting in the paint and putting it up there. And it's going to go off Espinal, 55-47. So eight minutes and 39 seconds to play here in the second half. Time for our leaders of the game, our Bayhawks leaders of the game. Craig, what is going on here on the, 
on the stat sheet. Yeah, right now, Juan Espinal still been the leading scorer throughout this entire game. Right now he's at 17 points with Corey Green. Corey Green have himself quite a second half. He's up to 15 points. And then leading in rebounds is Josh Winbush with nine. Winbush not doing a lot on the points, but is still racking up the rebounds. And that is good to see. So Juan Espinal, Corey Green among our leaders. You said Josh Winbush, are one of our, is he, is he lead, uh, leading rebounder? He is leading rebounder with nine, and Alex Holloway is leading assist goer with six. Excellent. 839 to play, 55-47. And that's our Bayhawks leaders of the game. Brought to you by FR Media, Bristol Community College, changing the world learner by learner. There you go, Jack. All right, 55-47, 8.39 to play here in the regional, the New England Regional Championship. We'll be right back after this. Back here at Bunker Hill Community College here in Boston. Massasoy with the basketball. Full shot clock. Trailing by eight, the Warriors. Handy cross court basketball. We're seeing a lot of risky passes here from both teams. Yeah, again, the post game's been completely taken out of the equation. Marcus Mitchell almost had another steal. Loose ball. Vega finding Corey Green. Green with a bounce pass to Mitchell. Mitchell can't get it to go. Yeah, it was, it, was a it was a pretty deflated pass. Didn't really, didn't really get enough mustard on it. Didn't give Mitchell a lot of time to get to the rack. Nice thought there by Green. A nice heads up play there. Seeing Mitchell go into the, go into the basket. In retrospect, though, Corey Green probably should have took that, wheeled around, and just went to the basket himself. He might have been better off. But Green trying to do the unselfish thing and try to get it to Mitchell. Kind of was an awkward position. His back was almost like kind of half face in the basket, kind of turned around a bit. And causing the foul was Malik Hester. He's up to four. Yeah, we see Malik Muhammad Hester in foul trouble yesterday. He has three. Both, both free throws there made by Handy, the handyman. Pulls this game to within six. A lot of time left. We're approaching the eight-minute mark here in the second half. And Coach Rob Delu, he has his rebound line out there. He's got Josh Winbush, Malik Muhammad Hester, and Zachary Vega. So really focusing on the boards are going to be the Bayhawks. Corey Green going to the rack. Somehow gets it between the two trees. Hester got hit from behind. No call on the foul. Yeah, yeah no call. And Massasoit ends up with the basketball. And I think they're calling the Tech. I think Coach Rob, yep, Rob Del Lue is getting a technical. Wow, that's a software height. Things are getting intense. And Rob Del Lue's even asking, what did he say? Well, exactly. We live in a soft world now. Soft world now, Craig. You can't say, you can't say anything to anybody. Now, this is the second technical we've seen in the game. One from the Warriors and now one from the Bayhawks. Things are going to get, things are going to get competitive out there and things are going to get intense. You're probably talking about referees who never played a sport in their life. Second free throw was good. Pointing to the sky is Bobby Belazos. Yeah, Belazos has been their best foul shooter and one of their best three-point shooters in this game. Massasoit doing, like you said, doing a much better job from the free throw line. And they're in the double bonus now. So every, every foul that BCC commits from here on out, Massasoit is going to go to the line for two. BCC with a trap in the corner. Uh, Mitchell going to be on his on his uh, offensive player. Trying to leave some space, though. Don't want to cause another foul. Kicking it back out. Handy with the fake. Pulls it with the short jumper from 17. No good. Loose ball. Monroe gets it. Uh, there's going to be an injury timeout on the floor as number 12 for the Warriors is down grabbing one of his ankles. That's going to be uh, real handy. Real handy. Real handy. I like that. I'm dyslexic. I'm dyslexic, so. And that's not good to see. Anytime you have a, obviously, injury to the leg area. It might be a cramp. The way the, uh, the Massasoit trainer out there trying to stretch that hamstring area. Could be a trolley horse. We know those aren't fun. 
But the way he's stretching out that, that leg, don't think he would be doing that if it was a knee. It looked like it was ankle. It looked like he was grabbing his ankle. No, it's definitely, it's definitely, um, he's definitely, he's grabbing his calf. Yeah, it's so. definitely, a, it's definitely a cramp. Definitely a trolley horse or cramp in that, in that calf area. Get to stretch that out, massage it out. And we have a break in the action with seven minutes and thirty seconds left. A little injury timeout. Hopefully, hopefully, Handy is okay. And Handy will. Will walk out the court under his own power. Gonna get him, gonna get him some water. Get get those fluids. Don't want to cramp up. 55, 51. Got to get him to the hydration station. <laughs> moisture, moisture reduction crew. Yeah, the moisture reduction crew doing a great job today as always. <laughs> no, I don't think we've seen the moisture reduction crew. I've seen him every once in a while. Trying to get that ball inside. It's going to go off Hester. Hester will knock it away. Good defensive play there by BCC. Not a tremendous scoring game. Both teams not shooting exceptionally well from the outside. Or from the field. And that ball, loose ball. Another turnover. Both teams turn the ball over. Back and forth. Yeah, Green wanted to put it up, but he had a, a defender right on him. Had Rolski had Ward right on him. Well, jump it in. Winbush with the catch. And that's going to go off. That's going to go off the Warriors right there. That was kind of a uh, like on the field. It's kind of a I don't know what just happened kind of play because Winbush tried to get it to Hester. It went off of I believe it went off of Edward. Well, that's what I mean. Mass and they just had no idea what to do with it. Yeah, Massasoit quick to the basketball like that. Costa going the other way, lays it up and in. Massasoit within two. Well, we've seen BCC always do these cross-court passes throughout season, and the Warriors are really starting to read it. Massasoit is sniffing it out. Mitchell for three, going to come up short. Corey Green will come away with it. Going to come to the basketball. Green, Wimbush going to the hole, puts it up. They're waving the shot off. Yeah, it's going to be on the floor. Going to be on the dribble drive. Foul is going to be on the center, Mark Monroe, the six foot seven center from Quincy. And Went to Quincy High School. And still only the fifth team foul for the Warriors. And there's going to be a travel call. And Corey Green wanted the foul call, but he's not getting it. Corey Green gets the ball on the inbound pass. And they call him for steps. And BCC, they had a nine-point lead. Now back down to a two-point lead. Still a lot of time left to go Still in this game. Yeah, seems like a mile to go. From the elbow, short jumper is good. Mark Georges. 55 to 55, that nine-point lead that we talked about, the largest lead of the game for both teams evaporated. Vega going baseline. That's, his, that's what he does. Can't get it to fall, ends up in the hands of Belazos. I thought Wimbush should have had that rebound. George has thought about it. Both teams, both teams on defense are doing a good job trapping and, and getting to the basketball. Yeah, you talked about uh, neither team really doing well from the outside. They're not getting a lot of opportunity to shoot from the outside because they're always being contested. Nice block there by Hester. Monroe stays with it. And Hester's there with the rebound. Good defense by Hester. That's a very risky oh, pass. Oh, man. And they're going to call travel. One thing that we've seen from both teams, because both teams are doing such a good job of trapping and attacking on defense, the skip pass, is, the skip pass has, been a big, um, has been a big thing for both teams. Yeah, both teams. It's been a big ploy for both teams. Yeah, you see there, Mitchell tried to go cross court again. Uh, Zachary Vega acting like a wide receiver, jumped up to catch it, but again, he had yeah. three players on him. Edward misses. Out of bounds, a Warriors ball. Ooh! I thought for sure it was going to be BCC basketball. Espinal acted like he didn't want to go near it. I thought it was going to be Bayhawks basketball. Loose ball on the court. 
They got a jump ball. And this should go. Espinal pointing the other way. It's going to be, they're going to say it's Warriors basketball. Yeah, gonna Warriors getting uh, on the end of a lot of calls. Yeah. If I had to put a scale on it, I would say Massasoit is tipping the skills right now as far as, uh, as far as getting favoritism from the refs. Just saying. Georgia swings it. Costa for three. Coming off. Espinal. Espinal knew. Keep his hands yeah. away. Tracking it down, making sure none yeah. of the, uh, he was tracking it down, yeah. making sure none of the Warriors players could get to it, but he wanted to make sure he himself did not touch it. Yeah, Espinal's been, he's been in the mix of a lot of those plays, and a good job there. Winbush. And they're going to call it on the floor. I didn't think that was too, um, I didn't think that was a foul. That was, um, no, not one and one yet. One more foul by Massasoit. BCC will be in the one and one bonus. Nice pass by Wimbush. Finding Vega. Gets it to roll. BCC takes the lead. With 4.26 to play, Vega with a chance for a three-point play. Yeah, since their best foul shooter going to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Trying to complete the three-point play is the most complete player. Mr. Complete, Zachary Vega. And Vega, and Vega finds himself again up in double figures. Ten points for him on the game. Yep, Zachary Vega, six foot four, freshman from Providence. Sinks the free throw, gives BCC a three-point lead. Yeah. Massasoya tied it, BCC takes the lead. And we still got a lot of time left with just under four minutes and 20 seconds to go. Who wants to go to New York? Championship on the line for the New England region, losing it out of, out of bounds is Jared Costa Hayward. He'll lose it out of bounds, and it's going to go back to being in the possession of the Bayhawks. And Costa Hayward was going to play full court. He's got no one around him. He's going to be guarding Holloway. BCC trying to take that championship back to Fall River. Massasoit still playing zone, collapsing Nice foul pass by Winbush. Did Vega underneath. Did you see Winbush? I think he just nutmegged him. Just went right through the legs. Yes. Winbush does a good job when they flash him high. He does a good job of passing out of the post. Either when they flash him up high to the, to the free throw line or to the top of the key, he does a good job of finding cutters going to the basket. And Vega's been a recipient for the second time in as many possessions. Vega does a good job of, of moving without the basketball and cutting to, towards the basket anyways. 59 to 59, 55. And this is shaking, this is winning time right now. 60 to 55, five point lead. Don't go away. Bringing to you this on FR Media. Picked up by Vega. Nice pass to Green. Green, body control, puts it in. What a heads up play there by Zachary Vega. That's a winning play by a winning player. And a great job by Corey Green going to open space and great patience waiting for his defender to get out of his way. And now Massasoya desperately needs a good possession here. Or this one could get, this one could uh, fall off the rails real quick. It's getting loud. That's the BCC faithful. And it gets to the point of whose nerves are stronger. Will Massasoya step up or is BCC going to take him out? Three point shot. They need it. No good. Rebounded by Espinal. Losing it. Monroe putting up and in and the foul. That was a huge sequence right there. Espinal pulls that rebound down. This one is. Wouldn't, wouldn't want to say that sealed the deal, but that would have been a big play right there. Espinal loses it. Ends up in the hands of Mark George's. Lays it in, gets the foul, and he could cut this lead to four. And Juan Espinal, that's his fourth foul. Both him and Alex Holloway are now in foul trouble. And you say this team never gets in foul trouble. <laughs> Three-point play there by Mark Georges. Hey, when it's playoff basketball and the intensity's up, anything can happen. Corey Green. Nice defensive play there by Edward. Edward. 
21 on the shot clock. Espinal, cross-court pass to Corey Green. Vega, corner jumper, no good. Rebound. Mark Georges is all over the place. Yeah, Mark George is having himself a good game. Yeah, he's their most steady player. He's their most consistent player, number five, Mark Georges from Massasoya. Handy's back in the game. Got that cramp stretched out. 2.30 to play. BCC has a lead. And that shot clock is winding down. Six on the shot clock. Rolski can't get it to go. Rebound by Winbush. Big time rebound, big time play, and that was a big time shot that could not go down. Coming up on two minutes to play. And Holloway doing a good job taking his time. BCC, they got a good, they got a bit of a lead here. They're really just going to want to kill time. It is a big possession. Holloway gets it in the corner. Green thought about it. Oh, Espinal swings it. That's the jumper right there by Holloway. Can't get it to fall. Green comes away with the rebound and a new 30-second 30 shot, 30 shot clock. That's a big play by Corey Green. Nice hustle getting to that 50-50 ball. And Holloway's just going to hang on to it for now. Warriors aren't challenging him. He's just going to hang on to it. This is just killing clock, killing time. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to go helter-skelter here. Hold on, to, hold on to this basketball. Get something going to the hole. Good, clean possession here that BCC needs. Corey Green loses it out of bounds. And that's not what you wanted to see. Massasoit calls a timeout. Four-point lead for BCC, Craig, 62 to 58. Exciting second half action. Things are getting intense. Things are getting loud and proud in here. That they are. Remember, last week in the Bunker Hill game, it really did come down to the final seconds. BCC had a bit of a lead. Gave up that lead really with in less than a minute. Massasoit really looking to jump on, really turn to, looking to turn on the Jets really and just try to get right back in. There's still a lot of time left on the clock and there is not, what is it, four points right now? That's yep. four points with a minute and a half. There's still a lot of time left. Good math. That's that BCC education. It's that quick maths. <laughs> 62 to 58. So 10 team fouls on BCC. Massasoit is in the double bonus. So they'll be going to the line for two if BCC commits a foul. Both teams in the bonus period right now. So what teams will hit their free throws? Who will step up here in the clutch? Regional championship play here on Championship Sunday here in Boston. And, Ma and uh, Massasoit with when BCC is on offense, you can see Alex Holloway just draining the clock as much as he can. Massasoit not really contesting him too much, just letting him drain the clock as much as possible. And Alex Holloway, like, like we said, he was, the, he was the man last week in the MCC AC tournament. He was the, uh, the all-tournament player last week. He does a good job of um, reining his team in and kind of put, getting the team under control, directing traffic, the floor general as we call him, kind of calming that team. I feel, I feel safe, and BCC should feel safe when the ball's in his hands at the point. Nonetheless, BCC on defense right now, playing that man-to-man. -man. Double team here. Bounce pass underneath. Oh, what a block by, oh but no, hell no, hell no. Is it a goaltender or a no. foul? That is gonna be, that was a clean block. Hell to the no, 62 to 60. Yep, calling it goaltend. It's the third time I believe BCC's gotten caught with goaltending. Monroe can't get a shot up on Wimbush clean. That was a hell of a block, I thought. 62 to 60, nonetheless, only a two-point lead. And BCC looking for a dagger play. Holloway, crossover, gets it to Green. Wimbush, inside, Vega gets it to go. Another assist by Wimbush. He's not doing it on the scoreboard. And Zachary but he's Ve getting it done in different ways. And Zachary Vega proving his case, trying to be the regional MVP. And it's going to be on Corey Green. It's going to be his third or his fourth. You can't afford to foul now because Massasoya doing a good job from the free throw line. You can't follow them right now. 40 seconds to go. 40.2. Here in championship play. The winner will go to upstate New York. First free throw was good, boy. Massasoya, they are the color of their jerseys right now from the free throw line. They are money when it comes to the free throw line. 
They do a decent job. They do a good job from the free throw line. And this is where we see Edward's nerves, see if he has nerves of steel. These may be some of the harder, and there he goes, he misses. There's a miss, Espinola gets the rebound. This it's is gonna be some of the point. hardest free throws you'll make. 10 second different, nine second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Massasoit with a half court trap. Espinal for three, can't get it to go. Massasoit with the basketball, shot clock is off. And they need a three, they need a three pointer. There it is, Edward for the three, he gets it to go! Ties the game! And a timeout called 64 to 64, 12.2 oh. seconds left. BCC oh, will have possession of the basketball. OMG. There is ice in that man's veins. Number three, Rolski Edward ties it up. We After missing one of his two free throws, he comes back and hits the three-pointer to tie this game. Wow. <laughs> they haven't hit a lot from out there, but when it counts, Woo! they hit that one. We got ourselves a game, folks. And just when you thought that BCC may have been able to pull this out, Rolski Edward hits the biggest three we've seen this season. 64 to 64. And you talk about Ed Edward really has disappeared a lot during this game. Mark Georges has been their most consistent player. Edward, we know that he's a good player, but he really hasn't been shooting his best from the outside today or from the field. And he hits the biggest shot of this game so far, tying this game at 64 from the top. Well, oh, biggest shot of this game. That's the biggest shot of this season. That's probably the biggest shot of his life. 12.2 seconds. Now, BCC, they can't turn the ball over. No, they you got to hold on for the last second shot, for the last shot here. If you're, if you're BCC, I, I like to play with Winbush, with Winbush catching it up high because he's been getting a lot of attention. You, you, get, you get Winbush to basketball, he's, getting, he's been getting double teamed. Yeah, we did see a play before where he did catch it, leaving Zachary Vega wide open, getting the easy pass to Vega, and Vega could score. Exactly. I like to see the. I like. Obviously, you like to see Alex Holloway with the ba basketball in his hands, but I like to see them. I like to see a play where they get get the ball to Winbush up high in the paint, and have somebody, Zachary Vega or Corey Green, backdoor cutting to the basket. We'll see what kind of play that Rob Delu has drawn up for his team here. Well, we may see it. Espinal is going to inbound. He's going to try to get it to Holloway. Holloway may try that play. He might yeah. try to get it to. Winbush. Holloway going to be guarded by. Jared Costa Hayward, seven on the clock. Here we go. BCC with a chance to win it. They take the title home to Fall River. Holloway dumps it in. Oh, no. my goodness. That shot doesn't it, count. It doesn't count. BCC turns the ball over, and we are going to overtime. Holy, wow. holy smokes. I think, you know, we, we're talking about we wanted BCC versus uh, Bunker Hill Community College. That would be the best for, you know, us uh, media people, you know, uh, no, no. us um, sports pundits like ourselves, fine sports pundits like ourselves. That was the, the, the drama, the drama game being in the home court of the Bulldogs, the team you faced last week in the MCC AC uh, state final there, and um, would have been a great rematch. But Massasoya has been a hell of a, a hell of a foe. And it has been the battle of Route 24. Rolski Edward is the reason that we are in overtime right now, and it's five minutes. Yeah, five minute overtime. As you said, this is turning out to be a hell of a game. Did not want to take Massasoit too lightly. They are the number two seed for a reason. And this has just been one hell of a basketball game. It's overtime basketball, Dave, here in the regional finals at Bunker Hill Community College. Yeah. Definitely worth the ride in our in our limousine, limousine riding. Jet flying. <laughs> Kiss stealing, wheeling, wheeling dealing. dealing. <laughs> Woo, son of a gun. We're styling and profiling. And BCC out there with their original starting lineup. All right, so if you just joined us, it's overtime, 64-64 in the New England Regional Final between Bristol Community College from Fall River and Massasoya. From Brockton, Winbush wins the tip. Throw all the points out the door. It's 0 0 basically right now. Corey Green for three, puts it up there, can't get it to go. Winbush 
Winbush puts it up there, gets it to go. Boy, do they need a big half from that young man right there. The six foot seven freshman gives BCC the early lead, early lead in the half, in the, in the, in the overtime half. I'm too excited, 66-64. Rattling and dattling, that's the BCC faithful, make no mistake about it. Going for the steal is green. Five on the shot clock. Going into the lane, Handy gets in the corner, losing it out of bounds is Hayward. Yeah, Hayward, he tried to do too much. He tried to jump, catch, and throw all at the same time. He just could not keep his mind on everything and just bobbled it, could not get it. Wasn't the best pass, though, by yeah, Handy. Yeah, that was, that was gonna say, that was a tough pass to handle. Approaching the four minute mark here in the overtime session. And Holloway still gonna make this his game, make them play his pace. Vega came up and set the screen. Now Green pops out. You can feel the intensity in this building. Espinal for three. That's gonna bounce up. Vega with the rebound, the putback no good. Got the other rebound though. Muscling up is Vega, they don't call a foul. No, they called one, but who is it on? Are they calling it on Vega? Who are they call? No, BCC fans like it. It's a foul on it is. the they Warriors. They are going to call a foul. I was going to say, there's no way, there's no way he didn't get fouled in there. I mean, who am I to say? I'm sitting like 40 feet away, but. And Vega from the foul line for right for today, he is nine for ten, looking to make this a two possession game. How many points for Vega? Vega has 15 right now. He has 15 points along with six rebounds and four assists. Got to get it from the free throw line right now, Vega. Make it at least a three point game and can't. Misses both free throws and BCC. Oh, it's, they're calling Winbush on a foul. Ooh, wow, they're going to call Winbush. No, Winbush needs to call, Winbush needs to ran it in right now. And that's Winbush's fourth. So Winbush, Espinal, and Holloway all with four. Winbush can't let his emotions get the best of him right now. I was talking with Coach Rob Del Lue prior to the game. He said Josh Winbush, mostly a quiet, mild-mannered young man. But at times, we've seen him, he can get emotional. And as Monroe going to the line, he has not been good from there in this game. And he misses the first free throw. As you say that, 66-64. Yeah, I believe this is his third time at the line today, third or fourth, and I think he's only made one or two. He is a sophomore center. He on a push. And they're going to call a push off. They're going to call that on Belozos. Yeah, Belozos is putting his hands up like, what did I do? Both teams, both teams are going to be walking up and down the court to go to the free throw line. And like we said, and it's a perfect example. It's just coming down to who can make their free throws. Right now it's Josh Winbush. Josh Winbush, who's been an excellent uh, foul it's, shooter for this team. Hasn't gotten too many chances today, though. Yeah, I was going to say that. But now this is his time now. Winbush has that pretty, like, arcing, like, rainbow rainbow shot, that high arcing rainbow shot, 67-64. Well, he took the jumper. You said it looked like a Kim Olajuwon. <laughs> it did. It did. That one dies on the rim. 67-64, BCC with a slim three-point lead with 3.38 to play in the overtime. Now Handy with the ball. Handy's going to take his time now. Twelve on the shot clock. BCC playing good defense. In the corner, Belazos for three, knocks it down. And he likes it. Belazos with a clutch three-pointer there. A big steal. Oh, bad pass by Holloway. Handy. Yeah, and he's got no help. Handy puts the second gear on. Offensive. And it's going back the other way. Good job by Juan Espinal. Had perfect position. Was not afraid to take the foul. And that is huge because now he's going to go the other way. Holy bleep. Good job by Espinal. The slight Espinal getting in there, taking the charge. And Handy's, and Handy is going to be out of the game. That is his fifth personal. 67. So Handy out of the game? Yeah, it's his fifth personal. Rayel Handy, one of the best players for Massasoit, has fouled out. 
That's his fifth foul, and he is out of the game now. And we have three minutes left in overtime. Still a tied game with BCC's possession. Wimbush catching it high. Wimbush going to the rack. He gets fouled. That's what he needs to be doing. Wimbush, he needs to start to be aggressive right now. That's Mark Monroe's fourth. We're going to have no one left by the end of this. <laughs> the deeper we go, maybe, yeah. Wimbush misses his first free throw. Malik Muhammad Hester, number 21, he'll come in for Espinal. He'll definitely be coming in for defensive purposes. Yeah, Coach Rob Delu trying to get his defensive line out there, get his rebound line yeah, out there. Yeah, there's going to be a little bit of offense defense. Wimbush gets BCC the lead. Under three minutes to play. Regional championship of New England here in Boston. Here's Edward, who hit that money three. Bellosos trapped in the corner. They'll swing it. Hayward. Monroe on the block, being double teamed. Nice block there, nice defense there by Winbush and Vega there too. Good job by Winbush. Monroe can't do nothing on the block against Winbush. I'm sorry. Yeah, Winbush hasn't scored much, but again, he has been so good on defense. Defensively, yes, without a doubt. Wimbush dumps it into Vega. I like that tandem. Jump ball. Oh, they're going to call a jump ball. Yeah, Vega wanted a foul, but it's a jump ball. It's going Massasoit's way. So Belazo is really kind of getting away with one. Man, both teams have played so hard. Both teams have played so tough during this one. Both teams giving it all, everything they got, all the blood, sweat, and tears. It all comes down to this. And all of this to show who goes to New York. Ten on the shot clock. Seven. Floater in the lane. Eduardo gets it to go. Floats it over Winbush. Over Winbush. Holloway going back the other way. He gets fouled. If you're if you're either team, don't you just take it to the hole right now? That's what Holloway was exactly thinking. He's just going to say, I'm going to take it myself. If anything, I'm going to get fouled, and I'm going to go to the line, and I have the chance to put points on the board. Exactly. Both teams got to be tired now, playing an extra session, playing all season long. You talk about I – know, I know Coach Rob Delu had his team out there in September, conditioning program, October, training camp. It's been a long, it's been a long road to get this far. Yeah, time and, I know, called. and I know for Coach Rob Delu and the Bristol Community College Bayhawks, they haven't come this far just to come this far. 70 to 69, BCC has the lead. Two clutch free throws by Alex Holloway. And I said, like I said, the road is long. Everything starts in September, October. The preparation, and you get down to this, this final game, which determines who goes to the Nationals, where only eight teams are gonna play. Eight teams out of all the uh, you know, junior colleges at this level. It's a, it's a prestigious thing to be part of that tournament in New York, as it is to be here today. And BCC has done a great job all season long. We said, we said from the beginning of, this, of the season, this team, is, this team is different. This team has a moxie, a proudness about it. And they've, um, they've done a great job all year, win or lose. But you know that Coach Rob Del Lue wants to get it done. It's been so long that he's been here and has, he's had some great teams. BCC looking to get over the hump for the first time yep. in school history. Yep, BCC, the state champions, wanting to be regional championships so they can see if they oh, can do I it. Holloway, I thought he had the. I thought he was going to get the steal there. BCC in man, We're looking to be in zone. Look, we can be in zone now. Belazos for three, gets it to go. Boy, has he been money from that corner. And Belazos now with the ice in his vein. Two clutch three-point shots from that man. You've got to get a man out there in his face. Massasoya with the lead. Went cold in the middle of this game, but he has been pure fire. Winbush, nice pass underneath the Vega. Oh, tipped away, though. By, by George's. Yeah, that, was, George's. that was George's. They knocked it out of bounds. Less than a minute now. Nerve-wracking time, right? 58.6 seconds to play. Defense, 
All right, here we go. 58.6 to play. Winbush, he's going to get fouled. He's going to get fouled. BCC needed that call. And these are very big free throws right now. These are very big free throws. That was a good job by Hester. He had the no-look inbound pass. Wanted to get it to Winbush. And he did get it to Winbush. Looked the other way. That's Spinal going to be coming in for Hester. Coming in for offense purposes. And Monroe fouls out. So now Massasoit has two of their starters who have fouled out. Winbush. And this may be interesting because this could, if the final minutes prohibit it, the final minute prohibits this, this could be the chance for BCC to really try to go off in their post game if they have the opportunity. Because Monroe was a big factor in keeping Winbush and a lot of these other big BCC players quiet from underneath the basket. Yeah, because Monroe, Monroe, six foot seven. Six foot seven, a very big boy. Yeah, very, very hefty man, taking up a lot of space there in the middle. Him coming out, him coming out as a factor. Winbush giving up a lot of weight there. Winbush, the more athletic player, you know, the better player. Um, he, he, he's done a good job of handling Monroe down low himself. Now Monroe's out of the game. Winbush, he has uh, more than enough height on this Massasoit team right now. Massasoit missing two of their better players right now, two of their starters. This is, a, like you said, this is a chance for Winbush to really get down there and make some hay right now. And uh, he has a chance to tie this game up. But like you said, under a minute to go. BCC needs to be looking to Winbush down low. Now Winbush needs to get on that block and, um, and see what he can do. Yeah, Winbush is now effectively the biggest player out there, and Winbush will definitely use that to his advantage given the chance. Most definitely. Who's going to step up here in championship moments? Again, David Cardoza and Champagne Poppy on the call. 72 to 71. Massasoit has the lead at this moment. Now the Massasoit faithful getting into it. Stomping. Wimbush taking it to go. Vega went high for it, loses it. Georges is there. 50 seconds on the clock. And Massasoit will call a timeout, and I think that was the right decision. Coach Jim Stapleton will call a timeout for his Warriors. And um, it's a one-point lead here. BCC needs a big defensive stop. 22 on the shot clock, 48 seconds on the game clock. Champagne. Yeah, still a bit of time left. BCC, if they can get the possession, they'll still have some time. Again, only one point, so really any field goal, given that Massasoit does not score on this possession, well, any field goal can win it for BCC. What a game. What a game. I mean, this has had everything that you want in it. Up and down, clutch three-point shots made. It's just had everything that you want. It's definitely getting all your money's worth. Definitely worth the ride. And if you're a, if you're a basketball fan, definitely worth the ride up here today to come watch some uh, good college basketball. NJCAA being uh, put on display here today, and uh, this is this is what it's all about right now. 72 to 71, it was a sl slow start in game. Both teams kind of feeling each other out, kind of sludging through the mud a little bit. Both teams not great with their field goal percentage, not shooting great from the outside and the early going. But both teams stepping up their game now. The intensity in this building is filled up, uh, to say the least. And we get ourselves a barn burner right now. We get ourselves a slobber knocker. 72, 71. New England regional title on the line. Who wants it more? Edward with the ball, he's going to take his time with it. Roski Edward, dribbling and dabbling. Georges crosses over, gets it to the paint, loses it, and it's going the other way. Oh, they're going to call a foul. I think they're going to call it on Corey Green. I know it's on Corey Green. Yeah, I know it's on Corey Green because you see that look on his face. Man. Wow. Going to the line, Mark Georges, free throw, gets it to go. 
And DCC going to call a timeout. And uh, Coach Rob Del Lue going to try to ice the shooter. A little bit of gamesmanship going on there. Rob Del Lue doing the same thing Jim Stapleton do, did. And Mark Georges has a chance to extend this to three. If Mark Georges makes a shot, if you're BCC with 31.6 seconds left, what do, you, what do you do on your next time down the floor? Do you go for three or do you go for the quick two if it's there? Hmm. Depends how quickly they can get down the court. If they can get down the uh, get down the court. And get a quick look. Get a quick look, less than five seconds, then I say go for the two. But if this Massasoit defense keeps up and really takes 10 seconds off the clock, you've got to go for the three. I don't think you have to think three right away. I think you want to extend this game as much as possible and um, try, try to get two, try to get something going to the hole because, like, you know, like we see, you know, both teams are on the double bonus. So if you get something going to the rack, you know, you get a good chance of picking up a foul there, you know, and uh, hopefully close in, hopefully close in a little, little bit more and then try to get a, try to get a steal on the uh, – on uh, the next possession for Massasoit. I think that's a, I think that's what you want to do if you're BCC with a make here. <laughs> unless you have an open look, unless you have an open look for three. You got Marcus Mitchell out there. You got Zachary Vega, number 10 out there. Number 15, Corey Green. Number four, Josh Winbush. Yeah, Rob Delu, he has his shooters line out. Yeah. And number three, Alex Holloway. You got guys that can shoot. Marcus Mitchell, Corey Green. Free throw. Missed no good. It. Rebounded by Winbush. Holloway with the basketball. Holloway going to the rack. Puts it up. Gets fouled. And he's going to go to the line for two. Now these are clutch free yes, throws. Yes, these are clutch free throws. Make no doubt about it, ladies and gentlemen. This is a tough position to be in. Yeah, people think, oh, you just got to hit your free throws. <laughs> it is not that easy. Yeah. You got the crowd. You got the game on the line. You got to be. You got to be clutch. You know, we hear that all the time. Are you a money? Are you a money player? All the way at the line. Uh, misses the first free throw. Holloway trying to. Del Lu, Coach Rob Del Lu. Calling out the defense for the next possession. Holloway knocks that down. Pulls it to within one. And um, we have a substitution. And Caleb Prov going to be coming in for defensive purposes. Coming in for Corey Green. And we haven't seen we haven't seen Caleb Provitt no, in this game thus far. No, but he is one of the better defenders on this Bayhawks team. Definitely is. And he's all over. He's all over Georges right now. And, and they're going to push and they're off gonna of Provit. And Provit comes to the game and commits the foul. Yeah, Provit tried to stay on him as close as he could, try to make him step out of bounds, but got a little too close. Well, the shot clock is off now. So I think BCC going for the steal there in the backcourt, trying to get something quick. That's why you have Caleb Provit in there. Trying to get a quick steal, trying to hopefully get a deflection. Trying to cause a turnover there. At the line, Georges. BCC faithful being loud. And Georges, with ice water in his vein, puts it home. It'll still be a one possession game if he makes this. 74-72. Georges at the line. Free throw, it's good. Nothing but net. Going back the other way. BCC looking to tie it. Marcus Mitchell. Holloway thought about it. Oh, I thought there might have been a foul. Holloway underneath. Oh, the jam by Winbush. Got to get a foul now. Got to get a foul. And Massasoit is going to call a timeout. Wow. Nice pass it by Holloway. Threading the needle. Winbush, nice catch and a jam. And it's a one-point lead. So BCC needs to foul quickly. Maybe you go for the steal. Whatever you got to do. But you can't let too much time elapse from this clock. And uh, you get a foul, Massasoit. Hopefully they miss a free throw or two. But either way, you're putting the pressure on Massasoit right now to make two free throws again. And they've been money from the free throw line. Yes, that they have. And the question is, who's going to be the one to foul, though? Because there is a, quite a few players on this BCC team I don't think in foul trouble. But it's I don't think probably it, not going to matter at not, this point. It's not going to matter. It, does, it doesn't matter. If you have the foul there, you get to take it. Yeah, 12.4 seconds left, a one-point game. And we'll see 
how many points up after these foul attempts. And uh, you can feel the pressure. You can cut the pressure with a knife right now for sure. 12.4 seconds. That's what's uh, in between the Massasoit Community College Warriors and a regional New England Regional Championship here today. Not if BCC has something to say about it. You need that pressure defense. Attack the basketball. Maybe see that trap. If I'm BCC, Craig, I'm, I'm putting full court pressure. You know, pressure right out the gate. And that's what they're going to do. Yeah, exactly what they're going to do. If that's you can get a steal here. Fellows else to inbound. Hayward in the, back, in the back court. Mitchell will get the foul. And I think that's the best, the best thing you're going to do. I think that's allow a couple seconds to rattle off. And now Jared Costa Hayward will go to the line. Six foot sophomore from Stoughton, Massachusetts. Uh, you can see Corey Green waiting to get into this game. Need the three point shooter if need be. And wow. BCC, next time down the court, they're going to need the three. We'll see if Coach Rob Dale Lou has a timeout, if he's going to call a timeout here. Costa, the second free throw is huge. Second free throw makes both free throws. Holloway. Marcus Mitchell gets it in the corner. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. 4.5 seconds to play. And now Coach Rob Del Lue is going to call a timeout. Thought maybe he should have called it earlier to set up his team. But nonetheless, he's going to call a timeout now. And BCC needs a three-pointer. There's no doubt about it. They need a three-pointer to try to tie this game and send it to double overtime. Yeah, BCC definitely going to get their three-point line out there. And again, as you said, 4.5 seconds. They're going to need to be quick. They're going to need to be efficient. And they just have to get a solid shot. They can do it if they get the opportunity to. And you can't rely on the... You can't rely on just your, you know, straightaway open look. If it's there and it's deep or wherever it is, you've got to put up three no matter what. So we'll see whose hands it goes to. We'll see what kind of play Rob De Robert Del Lou. We'll see what he draws up here. If he's got some Brad Stevens magic on that clipboard. 77-74. It's, it's been a hell of a game. What a final game here for the New England region. People have uh, they've seen a great contest between two great teams. <laughs> Route 24 rivals. Massasoit will come out, come back out on the court. BCC, Corey Green. Probably their best three-point shooter, inbounding the basketball. We'll see if they run a play for him or what they do. They'll dump it into Winbush. Green will catch it. Three-point shot. Doesn't get it. Can't get it to go. Massasoya has won the New England Regional Championship. The Massasoya Community College Warriors have won the New England Region. And for Coach Rob Del Lou, another heartbreaker, Corey Green. It was what I thought. They inbounded the pass to, to, uh, to their big man, Josh Winbush. Corey Green comes back into the picture, trying to tie this game up, and it was short. It was a tough shot to make. He comes up short. But nonetheless, Massasoya with a great, great um, effort out there today, 77 to 74. And they will take the New England Regional Championship. They will advance to New York, Sullivan County, New York. And they'll advance to the national championships up there next week. What a game. Just absolute craziness. This was, this was, I don't even know what to say. This was the closest game we've called overtime basketball in the regional championship. Just, again, it's a great effort all around. Both teams, honestly, hats off to both teams. Both teams gave it their all on offense and defense, and both teams left it all on the court, and you couldn't ask much more from either team. Yeah, it's definitely um, 
It's def def definitely a heartbreaker for BCC. We had said this team was something special, and they did have a great season. They got this far. It's too bad they're not going to go to New York, but again, this was a great season for Coach Rob Delu and the Bristol Bayhawks. Yeah, it was the, um, you know, BCC had a great year. They finished first. They finished first in, um, in Region 21. You know, they had a great season. They won the MCCAC championship, beating Bunker Hill last weekend. All right, BCC post-game show. I'm David Cadoza, joined by Champagne Poppy. Uh, tough loss here today for Bristol Community College. BCC seemingly had this game won, Craig. Final possession for Massasoya. Uh, BCC has a three-point lead. Uh, Roski Edward goes to the top of the key. Big clutch ice water shot there right at the, um, you know. And BCC still had 12 seconds to go down and, and uh, win the game. But um, it was a... It was a terrible possession. BCC, they had their chances to win this game. They had their chances to put uh, Massasoit away, even having a nine-point lead in, this, in their second half, the largest lead that any team has had in this game today. And uh, BCC just couldn't get it done. Heartbreaking loss uh, from our boys from, uh, from Bristol. Yeah, definitely. You know, really came down to the final wire. And, again, hats off to Massasoit. They just wanted it more at the end of the day. And Rolski Edward, again, with that clutch three-pointer, really, to tie the game up, send it in overtime. So again, congrats to the Warriors. Good luck in New York. You know, again, they wanted it more than BCC. Um, BCC, I think with Coach Rob Dell, he's definitely going to come back stronger next year, though. You know, we're going to have a lot of returning freshmen. So I think BCC is still going to have a lot to look up. We're going to, of course, miss guys like Juan Espinal, Luis Rosario, all of our other sophomores, you know. But again, I think BCC is still going to be in good hands, and they're going to still have a very good team next year. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if these guys come back, you know, come back, you know, stronger than ever. A guy like Zachary Vega, who's a, who we call him a complete player, a guy that can get it done on both ends. He's a good inside-outside player, complimentary game. Josh Winbush obviously has been a stud for this team. Um, the great freshman, you know, uh, picked it up there in the overtime. He was kind of absent in the, um, in the first half. And, um, but he got it done in different ways, was rebounding, altering shots, great, great blocks, good defense. Yeah, the lights going out on us over yeah, here. I think it's a way to tell us to leave. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, but um, yeah. So I mean, he was he was getting it done the second half, but um, you know the defense by the Warriors they did a good job of taking him out, double teaming him, putting a guy in front of him, putting you know having a guy in back of him, and um, they weren't even allowing BCC to enter the ball into Winbush. Yeah, exactly. A very defensive heavy game again. Like we said, very low scoring game. Again, it was just Massasoit's their shutdown defense not allowing BCC really to get going in the post until the big man Monroe fouled out. Then BCC kind of had a chance to get back. But again, game was like less than a minute at that point, so BCC didn't really get the opportunity to. And free throw shooting. We talked about it all year long. The Bayhawks have struggled from the free throw line. You know, they've been you know, probably a 50, 60 percent, you know, free throw shooting team at best during the free, th you know, during the season. And, and down the stretch, it really, really took a toll on BCC, missing free throws down the stretch that could have, tie this game, put this team ahead. But Massasoit, on the other hand, they were the clutch team. They made their free throws down the stretch. Yeah, that they didn't. Like I said, I've been saying this since the beginning of the game and really the beginning of the tournament. It really just comes down to whoever's going to make their free throws, and Massasoit was better today. And who are the Bayhawks' uh, leaders here at the end of the game for this regional championship? Well, at the end of the game right now, the leading score is actually tied. It was Juan Espinal who had been leading the entire game. Great game by Juan Espinal also. Uh, and Corey Green really picked up in the second half. They both had 17 at the end. Then Zachary Vega, who picked up in all ends, 15 points, four assists, six rebounds. So, really well, Zachary Vega was our player of the game yesterday, but today, Juan Espinal, without him today, I mean, I thought he was their best offensive player and was getting it done in all kinds of ways. He's a sophomore. This is his final game. I think we got to give it to Juan Espinal, right, for our Bayhawks player of the game. Well-deserving. He led the team in scoring throughout the entire game. Well-deserving. Juan Espinal will be our Bayhawks player of the game. All right, Juan Espinal, sensational sophomore. He is our Bayhawks player of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for all year for watching us here on FR Media, um, watching us on FR Media, Channel 95, Comcast and Goodell, watching us on YouTube, our live streams, being a part of it. The Bayhawks have had a great season. They were a top team all year in Region 21. They are the MCCAC champions. We want to say congratulations to Robert Del Lue. It's a tough loss, but congratulations to Robert Del Lue and all the Bayhawks on a great season. For this man right here, Champagne Poppy, it's been a pleasure working with you. I know you're going on to bigger and better things. You're the man going to, you know, going, going places. Going so anyway, places. so for Dave Cardoza and alongside me, Mr. Champagne Poppy himself, you've been watching Bayhawks basketball. Thank you all for watching. 
Catch us next year for more Bayhawks basketball. Good night, everybody.